I'm Deepak Chopra. You're watching New Realities. Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of consciousness. Who are we? How can we be more at peace with ourselves? And that's why I'm talking today to one of my becoming favorite people, Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob is the stress relief doctor. If you ever have stress, if you ever have anxiety or or even addiction, Bob is the person to go through to because he's he's dealt with these types of situations on all levels. I'll also say that he is the executive stress management wellness coach. He's also the publisher of 125 articles on ways to dissolve, reduce stress, anxiety, and addiction. And he's a guest blogger for addictionblog.org. And I'm very happy you're here today, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much, Alan, for having me on as your featured guest today. Yes, there's so much that you know and that you can talk about and you can actually help me. Let's talk about stress and the physio ology of stress. So there's many things that cause stress. Um, actually, like you say, everyone in this society is stressed. But what do we do about that? We can talk about the causes, and they are probably infinite, but people are stressed about money, are stressed about their family, stressed about their jobs. Well, where do you begin in your working with people? Okay, Alan. The first thing a person needs to do is to have an awareness that there's an issue. In my particular case, I had hit the stress burnout wall and I was not aware of it. And so one day I was putting on my tie and I said to myself, why isn't my tie fitting right? And I kept trying to get my tie right. Well, what had happened is because of the stress from my job, I had lost 40 pounds and was not aware of it. And so the first step is awareness that stress is a potential danger, killer, stress burnout if you approach and or hit the wall. And many people are at the wall, Alan, in our society. The Centers for Disease Control have said that stress and stress burnout are public enemy number one in the United States. So, so in terms of uh, moving to the next step. Once you have awareness... What if you do have awareness? I mean, that's awareness of your body. If you were more aware, you would know that you had lost 40 pounds, but your people aren't feeling. They're numb, right? Yes, yes. That's right. what I'm saying. So right. once, you, once, you had, once I became aware that I had an issue, then, I, then you have to make this commitment to do something about it. So there are many people that will procrastinate and that they're aware that they have a, a, a thing to need to lose weight or, or they... They know they have high blood pressure or they're pre-diabetic and then they're not going into the doctor. Mm -hmm. So the issue is you have to make the next step is the action step, which is you make a commitment to yourself to do something. And so what is the something to do? The something to do is to, to, to step back and take a look at what your life is like and what kind of person you are. So f what I mean by that is that each of us is a unique individual, mm -hmm. and what works for one person may not work for another person. In fact, what works for one person may be harmful for another person. So let me give you an example. On the hyper side, you have things like running, exercise, um, uh, just things that are fast. Mm -hmm. You know, people that they enjoy uh, doing an Ironman, and that relieves their stress. Or, or I just was talking to someone running in the Boston Marathon. Mm -hmm. Other people, no way, that would, that would stress them out. And so massage, yoga, um, uh, meditation. But, but if we go back to that first point, how do people become aware if they're not aware? I mean, what are the signals that people could... Um, relate to themselves like, oh, this is stress. This is not normal. That's that's. Let's start there. Okay. So again, for each person is different. Right. For some people, it may be watching a television show and and their light bulb comes on, and that's the key point. If whatever makes your light bulb come on. So what some does that mean? Light bulb. That, come that on? means that that 
that if you were in Las Vegas gambling and you're playing the slots, the handle goes down, goes, goes down when you get the three lemons, mm -hmm. right? And then you get the jackpot, right? right. Or another example, when we're kids, we're, we're old enough to know, uh, remember the jack of, jack, uh, j cracker jacks. Right. Uh, there was a little surprise in the, in the, in the, in the bottom, and it, it wasn't that That's it was That's a light going on. Right. All and right. it wasn't that it was worth that much, but what it is is that we ate the whole box to get there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the point is, your light bulb going on means that you are you get it, and so once you get it, you say, okay. So let's see, am I the kind of person that could stick to a routine and do um, yoga seven days a week? Maybe not. Am I the take for example myself? I'm on the hypo side. I love what? hypo. What does that mean? Hypo. hypo. That means that means uh, relaxation, less energy, less movement. So let me give you examples of hypo. Hypo would be massage. I'm lying on the, the massage table and I have somebody giving me a massage. I'm I'm sitting and um, I'm getting a foot reflexology or ear reflexology. I am uh, doing meditation or I'm doing chanting. These Notice that all these things on the hypo side are slow mm -hmm. and versus if you were running or if you went to the gym and you were doing spinning, that's on the hyper side. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about the stress literature, Alan, is that 95% of the stress research literature is on the hypo side. There's very little on the hyper side. More is coming out on exercise so physiology. So people are more like... Sit in the whirlpool. They, to, they, they to, know... To relieve stress. To relieve stress, yes. Right, right. And burnout. That seems like what most people would do, but you're saying there's also the other scale. Yes. That would be both. Yes, and more people are hitting the gym now, and so more people are aware that when I ask people, instead of uh, having a Jack Daniels or Martini at the end of the day to wind down, they say, oh, I go to the gym. And what made me, one of the things that made me very much aware of how powerful uh, going to the gym can be for some people, especially if they have low serotonin levels. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, uh, serotonin is a feel-good hormone. Uh, one, one, one easy way to, to think about it is um, many, ma I was always amazed uh, w with my wife. She always, she loved to dance. And many, many women, when I talk to them, they love dancing. And I always wanted to understand, what is it about dancing that women really love? Well, one day uh, I, I said to my wife, I said, listen, um, I really... I'm a good freestyle dancer, but I want to learn how to do ballroom dancing, the tango, the two-step. So one day we went to a, a, a dance class, and, um, and I said to the instructor, oh, you know, I don't know if I, I have two left feet. I don't know if we're able to get this. He says, oh, he says, listen, I know how to fix your issue. He says, I'm going to make you the woman, so you're going to follow me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to swing you around the room, like, and I'll be the man. So I said, okay. So... Well, I said the dance I wanted, always wanted to do was the disco hustle, right? Okay. I, I used to watch it. I said, oh, if I could just do the disco hustle. Well, the guy took me around, and he started swinging around the room. And I said, oh, my gosh, this feels fantastic. No, I, I, I – you have to experience it to, to, to know. It's, it's almost like for some people when you see a kid sticking his head out the window of the car or if you're on a sailboat and you feel the wind. So it's a euphoric feel. It causes euphoria. It causes your oxytocin to rise. It causes your serotonin to rise. But the main thing is it, 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 it boosts your mood so that you feel good. Mm -hmm. So my, the, back to the original question, which is uh, – once you have awareness, how do you get to doing something about it? Right. And so, as I said, once you make a commitment, then you have to take the action. So the thing is you have to book the appointment with the chiropractor. You have to go to the yoga class. Or, like I do, I, what I tell clients, it can be as simple as putting this, the CD or pressing the button play button for the MP3. Now, that sounds really simple. So, for example, let's say, you know, we have an epidemic of sleep deprivation in our society where many people uh, are sleeping less than four hours a, or a night. And I'll tell you something I discovered. I kept a track of my weight for three years, Alan, every night. And here's what I discovered. 
any time I slept less than four hours, I gained two pounds. Wow. And if I slept seven hours or more, I lost two pounds. Wow. This is while without exercising, not even walking. And so it, it was eye-opening. And the research validates that, that, that. Why is that? Okay, so I can, I can get right to the research. Yes. Okay, so when we don't go, I'll start with the, what happens when we don't do sleep. what we're supposed to, don't sleep. Okay, so we have devices like smartphones. We have computers, laptops, ta tablets, right? So all of those things, including the television, emit a blue wavelength light. Blue wavelength light interrupts melatonin production. Mm -hmm. Most people have heard of uh, melatonin. Melanin is... is, is, is it helps is, you is, sleep. Is, the is, more melatonin, the easier you have to can sleep. It helps, yeah. Well, melanin is, is, is what causes skin color, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is melatonin is, uh, is, is something that you need in order to uh, make your circadian rhythm run correctly. So if you're watching a lot of television or blue light, you're, it's going to be harder to sleep because there's an interruption in the natural flow of metal, melatonin. And the answer to that is yes, but it's even worse than that okay. because what happens? Surveys show that 47% of people fall asleep with their cell phone. And how many of us have ever fallen asleep with the TV on? Well, I do. Uh, uh, well, I, that helps me go to sleep. Well, but it's emitting. So what it was. Well, so here's what happens. You're asleep. You're snoring. However, you could never enter the deeper stages of sleep, such as stage four and five, where growth, growth, growth factor hormone is released and released, and also the the all the other things that need to happen to make you feel refreshed and renewed for the next day. So you may be sleeping, but you're not getting the restorative sleep. And so what hap What does that mean in plain English? That means that you're building a sleep deficit. And how does that affect your weight? It affects your weight, means your weight goes up for most people, but for some people, depending on their metabolism, they may be start losing What's weight. What's the relationship between sleeping and weight, weight gain and weight loss? Well, as I said, it's you know, as, as, as I said, the, 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 the lack of sleep in, uh, interrupts the proper, di uh, proper digestion of food, oh, okay. um, the absorption of food in the colon, and, and there are also other, you know, I don't want to go too deep in, okay. into neurochemicals like leptin, et cetera, but, but, but there are, um, you know, ketones and other things that, that are affected when you don't get sleep. Here's one other point. Um, I, you know, before we started, Alan, you know, uh, as you as you know, you know, my wife passed away I know. this 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 past summer, which is very stressful to have a partner, family member pass away. I mean, that's probably one of the most stressful things that someone can go through. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so it's on the top ten. But it's not just that. When you lose your spouse, I, in my case, I lost the love of my life. Uh, she was also my business partner. She was my girlfriend. She 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 was she was my confidant. And as most men would know, when they married the right woman, my wife made me always made me look good, and she made me look smart. I used to joke with her. She was my copy editor, and I said, "Honey, I'm missing something here." And she says, "Oh," and she would always give me the sentence or the word that I needed in it to make it pop. And so that is. Um, so the, the, the bottom line is, um, to be honest, I, I am, I'm still in the process of grieving because it's less than um, a year. And it's natural to grieve. Yes. I mean, if you didn't grieve, there would be a problem, really. Well. I mean, I think. I mean, you, we need to feel that. I mean, right? I mean, is, and, and that's how you clear the stress, by allowing yourself to feel and that, it. And that's a very good point uh -huh. because most people have not, ever thought about what is grief and 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 what is bereavement and what is mourning and what what is the purpose what is it can and, you tell and me? so yes so i'm going to give it to you of course uh, that's why i'm here i know i'm here to learn that, that, that's here so We're both this guy has studied everything Oh, Alan, come on. That, oh, that's you're I, really an expert in this field. That's why I really wanted you on the show, because you know the physiology, the, the chemistry, the emotionality, and what to do about it. So, And, and, and also I have the lived experience, right. which is actually the most in, important element, because I, 
I've had to walk my talk. Mm -hmm. And so in my particular case, so ask your question again. No, go back to you saying your wife passed and what happened. What had you deal with? Oh, okay. All right. So my wife uh, passed away and after a valiant battle with cancer. And um, uh, one of the things that she said to me that, that was so powerful Uh, about six weeks before she passed away. She turned to me and she was lying in the bed and she said, Bob, she said, it's not fair for me to leave you now. And and she said, because you're finally a fully trained husband. And so, you know, at her memorial service, I actually said that we had a memorial service in Florida and one in Brooklyn. And that type of levity, Mm -hmm. even though she was close to the end, you know, showed her character. And, 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 and that has helped to sustain me. And, and so the thing is, that same thing happened when my father passed, he said to me, one of the last things he said was, do me a favor, just marry someone from our own species. Oh, wow. <laughs> so okay. I said that at his funeral and everyone laughed at that. Right. But, you know, it does take an evolved being to kind of joke in those situations. Yes. So what were you saying then about your wife and that at, you're saying her situation and tell me that what you, where you were going with that. Well, the, the point is, is how have I handled uh, the, yes. the grief process and, and, and moving into recovery and then healing. So I, I have an advantage over most people in the sense that, 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 I, I, my doctoral study was on mother loss and grief recovery. My mother died when I was seven years old, and unfortunately, we didn't get any kind of therapy or, or uh, uh, there was no discussion. You know, it was back in the 1960s. This is how things were done. So, t- so picture this. Two weeks after my mother died, you know, my father's grieving so deeply, he says to my relatives, you know, come over and take whatever you want. And said, so within two weeks, there was no evidence that my mother had ever lived there. Mm. And so imagine the hole that would create in the family. And no one else in the family except once one, one of my aunts even mentioned my mother's name. So I was not even aware for until very late in my life that um, I was still grieving my mother's death. Because you never had a chance to at seven. Closure. I never had closure. Mm -hmm. And so I recall being at a church service in Washington, D.C. I actually was on a date. And the minister said something, and then I had one of these unbelievable moments, and this was the moment. I actually was transported back in time, Alan, as and I was seven years old, and I was at my mother's funeral. And this is happening in real time and what, during a church service. And the tears started to come down my face. Now, you have to picture this. I'm on a date, and I'm trying to pretend I'm not crying, so I have to get up and excuse myself when I go to the men's room. And I'm sobbing in the bathroom because I'm back as a 7-year-old at my mother's funeral. And here's the thing that people wouldn't know. At the funeral, it was an open casket, and the part at the end of the funeral when they ask you, you know, the family to come up at the end to say your final uh, goodbyes, I didn't get up. I couldn't go to the casket, and people were pulling me to Mm -hmm. trying to get me to go, and I never went. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a stuck state. For man, emotionally for many, many, many years. And so now I was, I remember I was 37 years old when this happened. Mm. And I said, oh my gosh, I thought I was over my mother's death. But now this is 30 years later, I'm 37. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the thing, I'm in the bathroom and I kept saying to myself, I'm looking in the mirror and I say, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. And this guy walks in the, in, in the thing and, and I'm dabbing my eyes, <laughs> right? I'm saying, and I said to him, oh, oh, I'm not crying. So this is part of the problem in our culture. You know, unfortunately, you know, let's be honest. Sometimes, you know, we get raised that men have to be tough. Men can't try. Boys don't cry. And this is utter nonsense and needs to change. You know, <laughs> boys have feelings, and as you see on, as we see on the social media, you know, uh, all the bullying and things like that. So, in any event, um, 
that was my wake up call that something was not right. And so what ended up happening, uh, my doctoral work was actually changed because I was in the process of doing a traditional uh, stress management study. And then one of my friends committed suicide. Uh And so that was life changing because I said, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. Why not do research that will make a difference for myself and, and in the world. And so that's how I got on this path of studying grief and existential grief, and that that's another uh, issue. But the point is uh, for recovery, so, 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 so there's a grief process, and then there's a, a recovery process, and then it's a healing process. What do you mean there's a grief for loss? The recovery yes. is what then? Say that again, Alan. So you have grief, yes, and you feel the emotion, the loss of your mother or your wife, yes. Uh, and then what do you mean by recovery? Okay, recovery means the point where you can uh, uh, review the experience and not break down, and be okay, and be a support not just for yourself but for other people. Healing is transpersonal where you're able to talk about it and and use your experience like I'm doing now to assist others because often we don't realize sometimes it's just a smile or a good morning or you're going to be okay until tomorrow. And, Alan, I I have to tell you this. I've had um, a couple of uh, um, very uh, moving moments in my life where, where I have said something uh, like in a stress management exercise, or I had just said a kind word to someone, and they have told me later, unexpectedly, that that helped them not commit suicide. Really? And, and That's so powerful. that had been very, very surprising to me because, you know, often we don't uh, realize the power of our words and, uh, and how your mood could lift someone up when they are down in the dumps just by you radiating your vibration, your presence. Your love. Your your caring. Absolutely. People have to know that there's caring there. So when your wife passed and because of your experience with your mother, you allowed yourself to feel and and you're still feeling that. But how do you go through that? Is it uh, just going through its natural course, letting it take, or do you do something to, to just be with it and deal with it? I, okay, so I want to answer that in two ways. Yeah. The first way is that I want to answer the previous question, which was what is grief? Mm-hmm. What is the purpose of grief, right? And then I'll, I'll get to the yes. second part. Okay, so the purpose of, purpose of grief, dep- uh, one level of looking at it, is to increase the chances of our survival. So how's so, that? So I'm going to explain. Okay. So so what grief when you're grieving it, it results in a recalibration of the nervous system. So what it's trying to do is to recalibrate in a way by the the, the crying, the sobbing, etc. It's looking to to take your nervous system to a never level of recursivity. So think of it like this. Um, in the wild, uh, uh, a, a cheetah is chasing an antelope. It catches the antelope, but the antelope is, is able to escape. So anyone who's ever seen the Wild Kingdom show would know when that antelope escapes, what's the first thing it does? It shakes vigorously. And so what is it that? That shaking is recalibrating its nervous system. The difference between a human being and what an animal is doing is that we have this thing called a mind, and so we engage in a lot of overthinking. So if we just, uh, we did a lot of shaking, in fact, we, we, you know, I know someone that does a technique called shaking medicine, which, you know, it looks ridiculous, but it comes out of the work of the Kalahari Bushmen. And so part of their routine is that you do this vigorous shaking and it recalibrates your nervous if someone's system. under stress or with grief, would you recommend that kind of shaking practice? For, for it, it doesn't work for everyone. There, I don't believe there, there, there are very few techniques where it, uh, a one technique works at the 100% level. So the thing is, this is where a person has to step back. And, and here's the thing, Alan. 
grief is different than it's a different form of stress than 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 say anxiety or pain. Um, uh, grief grief takes you deep into the core of your being. It hits you right in your solar plexus. And so, you know, there's no need to talk about the five steps of denial and numbness and that type of thing that people are familiar with. It's basically what I'd say is grief, when, when you lose a close loved one or a beloved pet, it's what would be called in the literature a catastrophic bifurcation. In plain language, it's your life has been shattered and it'll never be the same. So it's a before and after moment. Mm. So that's what grief does. When you really love someone and you lose them, and it doesn't matter if it's your a... Your life is completely changed. It's and shattered. So you're grieving for the old life. It's shattered. And you're grieving for... It's shattered. It's shattered. So you think of... But here's the point, Alan. Something broken is one thing. Shattered is just... It's it's just horrible. I mean, trauma's like that too. Yeah. So the, so so grief is trauma. Uh-huh. So grief is trauma. It's deep trauma. So so uh, and for some people, it can re- result in PTSD and and, and other things like Gr- that. Grief can. Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. And then how do you get through those shattered moments? I guess maybe I'm asking the same question over and sure, over again. Sure, sure. Okay, that's because the second Because I want to get it. But sure, yes. sure. Okay. So the first thing is there's, there's no sh- there are no shortcuts. Okay? So that's the first thing, right? you got to walk the path yourself. That's the second point. No one else can walk that path for you. I, this is like addiction recovery, I, right? But, but I guess the shortcuts people think they have is taking a pill to numb themselves out. That's never a shortcut. That's a long cut. But, yes, you have to, I understand what you're saying. For but some you, people, at, the, at a particular moment, they may need the pill because— they they need they they can't handle it. They're in a state of overwhelm. But I know what you're saying. There's no shortcuts. You have to be with the feelings, whatever they are. Right. And so so the thing is again, the road to 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 recovery from grieving uh, is different for everyone. Okay. So for some people, but I, I, I just want to interject this because sure. I think this is something really important that, that y- your audience uh, would appreciate. One of the things that's about our society is that we're taught how to get stuff, how to get things. But we, almost none of us are taught how to deal with losses. You know, you go outside, your dog got hit by a car. Oh, my gosh, you're five years old, mm. okay? Um, you had a pet for 17 years and the pet dies. I, I, I know someone who said to me, and I, I was actually in shock when she said this, she said she had a little puppy and she said she was more devastated when her puppy died unexpectedly, got some kind of virus, and um, then when her the mother died. I gotta tell you, that, I, that was shocking. And I, so here's the thing, I asked her why. She said, well, when I'd be unlocking the door to my apartment. The puppy would be scratching at the door. She said, when I was taking a shower, he's scratching the door. He slept at the foot of my bed. He was, and I said, oh, you got unconditional love. That's right. what we're really talking about. And so that speaks right to the grief experience, whether it's your mother, your father, your brother, your, your wife, your cousin, anyone that you really loved and care about. Now notice that, we don't grieve when the the the, the, the situ- even if a situation is horrible, we tend not to grieve when there's no emotional attachment or tie. We might say, "Oh, that's a tragedy," but we don't f- generally feel anything. So, what I'm pointing out is the grief is more of a narrow focus thing. It hits you right in the center of your heart, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, it really, yeah. it really, it really grabs you. Yes. you know. And so mm-hmm. now, to, let's get let's get right down to the nitty gritty, which which is what you want to know. How do, how do, how do how do we snap out of it? Well, I guess you're also saying feel it. Don't before you want to snap out of it, you have to actually allow 
that to get you. Unfortunately, you know, you know, we live in a society where a lot of people don't want to feel stuff, and so then you can't can't recover. Unfortunately, you are a hundred percent correct mm. that 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 one of the main um, uh, things, action steps that you have to take is that you have to allow the process to unfold, and that's what I mean. That is different for each person. Let me give you an example. I was on a cruise. And I was writing and this guy comes up to me and he says, he says, what are you writing? He says, every time I see you, you're always writing. And I said, listen, I'm writing about grief. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then he sits down with me and he starts telling me the story. He says, you know, my mother died two years ago and I was the big brother. And I have two siblings and we were there when she passed away. So they were crying and sobbing and I you had to be the big brother. And guess what happened, he said. He says, now it's two years later. He says, every day I wake up, I'm sobbing. He says, I'm not crying. He says, I'm sobbing. And then he asked me, he says, what's wrong with me? I said, there's nothing wrong with you. I said, you're having a delayed grief response. Mm. I said, you took care of business two years ago. You helped your family. But now it caught up with you. And guess what? Like everything in life when the knock at the door comes is never a good time. So now this is two years later and you're crying every day. So I'm letting you know you're okay. It's okay. You grew up at a time where, where, where boys were told uh, something's wrong with you if you're crying. Now you're a man. And so who could you go to? You're going to go to the sports bar and say, oh, I'm crying every day. No, you're not because right. unfortunately that's an embarrassing thing. Well, I want to also shift a little bit. I mean, the grief work that you do and helping people through that, I think, is valuable. You also just deal with stress, and we'll get to addiction if we have time. But the stress of everyday living, which we put on ourselves, right, because we're, we're in that or world. Or it's put on us. It's put on us, and we, put, keep put, we keep putting it on ourselves. So that's a whole different physiology, Right then, then the grief part. What, no, what? not necessarily. No, no. What, no. What, no, it's all. It's all. Think of it as a large umbrella. Uh -huh. Okay, so you have an umbrella. So under stress, you you have anxiety, you have grief. Think about it. Mm -hmm. If you have a severe headache, are you stressed out? Yes. Physically. If you have low back pain and it's killing you. Are you stressed out? So here's the thing. We, some of these categories are arbitrary. However, but the, so that we can understand what we're talking about, if I say, do you have a chronic pain? Do you have a, you know, a pain that, that's mm -hmm. recurring in your back, et cetera? What, the point that what I'm making, this is, this is a key point. You brought up a key issue. Most uh, people try to or th conceptualize this, these different stressors as totally different, and they are not. Well, I'm yes, I, I agree with that, and there's a relationship, and there's a physiological yes. relationship, but what about just the stress of anxiety, like not having enough money to feed your family right, and all that? That's a different type of stress. Yes. Like you have to work harder at your job, and yes. that's different than a physical pain. Right. I mean, what's the physiology? How do you get through that? And I know you gave us an exercise when I talked to you originally to kind of drop into a deeper space. OK, so here's the thing. Yes. They're not as different as you think. Okay. So 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 let me tell you why. So when you don't have enough money, you, you, your anxiety level goes up. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're like, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? Right. Your stress level is off the chart. And guess what? If you had an injury or a pain someplace, that thing is going to start aching. And what, what does it do, Alan? It starts to throb, right? <laughs> Throbbing pain, right? Can't pay my bills, can't sleep at night, you know. Uh, well, what does someone do about that? Okay, I mean, so, yeah. so here's the thing, okay. Having a, some form of stress m management pr routine is critical to, to improving your chances for longevity. Mm. So here's the thing. The research has shown clearly that stress can kill you. So I don't want to frighten anyone. <laughs> You're frightening me. No, it's okay. I don't want to frighten no, anyone. No, but, 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 but 
just like some the research is showing that a person could die of a broken heart or someone, you know, we've heard these many of these things before, like a person gives up hope and then they, they die. Or what we're seeing is couples that have been together a long period of time die within hours of each other. The love is that strong. So, the, the, you know, the research is starting to de- catch up to, 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 to what we know already. So, so here's some of the things that you can do. Thank so, you. I'm hoping we're getting so, to that. Okay, okay. good. So, yeah. so you can pick and choose. So if you think yoga I'm using that example would be, and there, there are how many forms of yoga? Many, many forms of yoga, Hatha yoga, uh, uh, Raja yoga, et cetera. And so you find something, you look for something that you can do regularly. And, you know, and the, the yoga is good, especially if you use breath work. That, that seems to help many people, especially with anxiety, because by controlling your breath, that, for example, you cannot have a panic attack if you are using or experiencing deep diaphragmatic breathing because your breathing is short and pulsed. Just like you cannot, f- for if you have a normal physiology, you can't be depressed if you throw your shoulders back and lift up your head. Mm-hmm. Think of when you see a depressed person. They got their sl- slumped shoulders and their head is down mm-hmm. and they have a blunted effect. So if you smile and you throw your shoulders back and throw your head, head up. You're changing it's, it's, your it's physiology. Changing your physiology. Uh-huh. And so here's, here's a good point. Our physiology is bidirectional. It doesn't matter if you relax your mind first, then your body will automatically relax. If you relax your body first, then then your mind will automatically relax. Okay. And that's the thing that people know with medication that that you know by doing that. So here's the thing. Everybody wants a, 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 a not only an instant fix, but they want a fix that you just have to do one time. Right. The bad, here's the bad news. The bad news that there is a fix, but you got to do repetition. That is just how we're built. So it would be just like sleep. You could go to sleep one time or brush your teeth one time, but, you know, if you don't, if you don't go to sleep again, guess what happens if you don't brush right. your teeth again? If you don't eat, it's like So it's can. the same thing with stress reduction, so stress relief. What is that exercise that you did for me the other day when we had that initial conversation? Yes, that was, that was a custom open focus exercise that I did for you, and I would love to share that with your audience. We t- yeah, because I felt different after we did that. So why don't we share that? That. That's a really practical thing, and people can look at this over and over again. Uh, because, but before we get there, I want to say say that it seems like there's nothing you can't deal with. Maybe there is, but it's like you've looked at the whole scope. Is that true? Do you ever get a situation and you go, "I don't know what to do with this person"? Oh, sure. Oh. So, so, so you let me be clear. Okay. I'm, I'm a, I'm a a stress management coach. Mm-hmm. I don't do therapy. Right. There are many people that need therapy. There are many people that need medication. Mm-hmm. So if a person's in, you know, you know, for example, if a person has the, the neurobiology where, where they actually have some structural defect that, that their, their, their nervous system's not running right, then they need uh, medication. Right. If, if, if another person has deep-rooted problems uh, of a certain type, they may need therapy like cognitive behavior therapy or, or DBT or, you know, some, some other um, psychotherapy. I don't do any of that. What I do is coaching. So here's, let me distinguish uh, yeah, and make that clear what the distinction, yes. what, one of the distinctions <laughs> is. Okay, so when you are in therapy, you could be in therapy for years and, you know, you're going back to your childhood or you're, you're reliving the thing. In coaching, it's, it's the exact opposite. You have a headache and you want it gone and you want to know how to prevent the headache aches from coming back. So, so that's, that's what I show people. So you have, a, you have anxiety. So, so uh, what you want is your anxiety gone. So if you have a normal nervous system, then I can show you how to dissolve your anxiety um, pretty rapidly with, without any medication and show you how to prevent uh, anxiety when 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 you start feeling you feel when you see your triggers. So, for example, for some people, they might 
uh, get an email and you go, oh, my God, or you get a text or they're like, oh, my gosh, or they're watching, they've got, they're in the stock market and then the stock dropped and they go, oh, gosh, you know, so and then that's a trigger for them. So once you know your triggers, you can, you know, so there's different techniques. I might use uh, neuro-linguistic programming. I might use Ericksonian hypnosis. I might use open focus. And I have um, several techniques that I have developed that, that, that I use only with clients. I haven't actually released those. So uh, you're a therapist, so you're not, not a, a therapist. Not I'm a, a ther- coach. A coach. A wellness coach. Okay, I get it. Big I difference. It. There is a big difference. Yes. So, uh, yeah, immediate results. Okay. Now let's go back to that exercise that y- you want to do, and um, yes. people watching can also have right. this experience because I think it's very effective, and I, I need it. Help me, Bob. Okay, good. All right. So, so, Alan, I want to start with a disclaimer. Okay, okay. the disclaimer is that, that, that the exercise that I'm going to do is educational in nature and is not any form of diagnosis or medical treatment. And you should always consult your medical practitioner before engaging in, in new exercises. And this and exercise is to relieve stress. Is it, that? It, I'm going to I'm going to do more than relieve stress. I'm going to relieve stress, anxiety, pain, clear up, uh, improve your mental clarity and your sense of well-being. And so that's what we're looking to do for You're the do audience. Do all those things. Yes, simultaneously. Okay. Because listen, um, Alan, we we we're 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 in a society where it almost feels like we're in a vice. You know, when I was in the eighth grade, I was in wood shop. And, and I remember they used to have the thing on the side of this, and you'd put the, the piece of wood in there, and you turn the handle. Well, that's almost what life feels like for many people. You go up to people and you say, how you doing? They go, I feel like I'm in a vice. I said, oh, you feel like you're being squeezed. They go, I'm being squeezed on all sides. So uh, many people, unfortunately, Alan, when they go home, they don't even have relief when they go home. They got pressure at the job. They got pressure at home. They right. got pressure, uh, you know, uh, in their social situations. They belong to a, a organization, et cetera. And so, so they're getting squeezed, okay. right? And so, so this exercise, what, what people really need is a multifaceted approach that works in a comprehensive way that, 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 Saves you in feelings of, what, and, uh, and I'm just going to bring in the title of one of my books, Orgasmic Relaxation, okay? We can all now, use that. Now, I wrote that book uh, uh, a while back, and, and, and to be honest, I was chastised by the title. But I, I used to say to people, did you read the, re- the subtitle? They just didn't, you know, Orgasmic Relaxation, Using the Power of Your Mind, to achieve ult, um, um, uh, ultimate relaxation with the tension relieving technique. So I had this technique that's very powerful, like the open focus technique, works in a different way, but it does get the same result, which is getting you to a place of homeostasis. It reduces your allostatic load, which means that you feel better and your neurochemicals, your sympathetic nervous system is quieted. That means cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline goes down, and that means the beneficial hormones, the catecholamines, oxytocin, dopamine, uh, um, uh, uh, the, um, uh endogenous morphine, they go up. Bottom line is that you feel better. Those are your parasympathetics. So think of a seesaw. This goes down, that goes up. Okay, so I'm going to go right into the open okay. focus. It's called open focus. What? Open focus. It's the open. It started out as the open focus technique. And this is something you developed. No, oh. this is developed by uh, a, a, a gentleman named uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Les Femini of the Bo- Princeton Biofeedback Center in Princeton, New Jersey. He developed this now almost all, uh, 50 years ago, and this came out of neurofeedback and biofeedback. And what he discovered with clients is that the highest level of pain anxiety and stress relief that was achieved with neurofeedback and biofeedback equipment could be achieved without equipment. And that he called open focus. So let's cut right to the chase. Let's do it. Let's cut to the chase. So just a just a minute of explanation. Okay. The way open focus works is that it 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 
reduces the gripping that most people have by using the concept of space. And so I'm going to ask you, Alan, a, a, a series of questions, and there will be a short pause between questions. And so, I'll, for example, I'll ask you a question, can you imagine the distance between your feet? And so what I don't want you to do is to try to say, oh, there are 18 inches between my feet. Just get a sense of Just the feel space. feel that. Feel right. the space. And okay. then when I ask the question, there's no response required from you. Just allow your body to do whatever it wants to do. And the last piece is that is to ask you, the, since we're in a data-driven uh, society, is that uh, uh, zero being no stress zero being no anxiety, zero being no pain, et cetera, and 10 being maximum pain, maximum stress, et cetera, where are you now? So to start off, Alan, so where's your stress level right now? I, I actually feel a little stressed today, so I would say mine's about seven and a half, eight, could be eight. Okay, Never so your stress high. is at eight, okay. And, and so your anxiety, what, what level? Wasn't anxiety and stress? Re I don't know no, the difference. An 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 okay, so anxiety is, is where you would be uh, worried about a future event or, 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 or ruminating about a past event. And what's str that's my stress, the anxiety. They're okay, related. so those are two different things. Okay, so when you say stress. What okay, am I so stress, stress would be, um, uh, you know, uh, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to pay your rent? Um, uh, That's stress. stress. Yeah, stress means that that you're on the subway and and the, the guy's leaning on top of you or you know they they oh, so I, I think of, my anxiety is higher than my stress. I okay. think I'm not as stressed, but I think I have more anxiety than okay. stress. Okay. Okay, so so tell me what you think your stress is. Oh, my stress then is probably 5. Okay, my anxiety is probably 8. Then. Okay, good. Okay. All right. And so what about chronic pain? You have any pain? No. Two, one, a two. One. Okay, and what about the, your uh, your mental clarity? I'm not as clear as I. I'm probably. Remember that a lower number means you're clearer, and a, a higher number means I you're might less be clear. I at a seven. A seven means that it's not that clear. Not that clear okay, right now. Okay, good, good. And then your overall sense of well-being. Uh, six. A six. So right now you're 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 not you don't have a really good sense of well-being. Not not like I usually have. Okay, excellent. And it's All not right. because I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, so here's let's start. Okay. So take a moment now to relax your posture. And when you're ready, please close your eyes. Can you imagine the space inside of your mouth? And as you become aware of that space, is it possible? for you to simultaneously imagine the distance between the space inside of your mouth and the space inside of your left nostril. Can you imagine the space inside of your left ear And as you become aware of that space, can you imagine feeling even more deeply into the space in your left ear? Can you imagine the distance between the space inside the bridge of your nose and the tip of your chin? Can you imagine that as you inhale naturally, your breath flows through the space inside of your throat? Can you imagine that as you inhale naturally, your body begins to fill with space? be surrounded by space, permeated by space, right where you are. <sighs> K 
Can you imagine becoming aware of the space in which your stress, anxiety, and any chronic pain exists, reside, or occur? Can you imagine the distance between your anxiety and your chronic pain? And as you become aware of that space or those spaces, can you imagine the distance between your anxiety and the space in which your stress occurs? Can you imagine hearing silence? Is it possible for you to imagine tasting the space in which silence exists? Can you imagine the space inside of your heart? And as you become aware of that space, can you imagine the distance between the space inside your heart and the space inside the feelings of love, joy, ecstasy, and bliss? Can you imagine feeling right into the heart of any remaining stress, anxiety, or chronic pain you may be feeling? Bathing your attention right into the heart of any remaining stress, anxiety, or chronic pain, while simultaneously neither resisting nor rejecting, nor encouraging any pain, anxiety, or stress that may remain. Can you imagine now opening your focus of attention to include any remaining pain, stress, or anxiety you may be feeling, and simultaneously becoming aware of your feet on the floor, your back on the chair, and any smells in the room, and also feeling into the space in which silence exists. Can you imagine that as you repeat this and any other, any other open focus exercise, that the benefits to you will magnify and increase? Can you imagine repeating this exercise two or more times per day? And when you're ready, Please open your eyes. You have a great voice. Thank you. <laughs> so let's tell your audience what, about your experience. Okay. W well, as I was listening to your voice, I did feel this sort of tension dropping away. I feel felt like, like I was being carried a little bit into another space when you talk about feeling the space in the ear or in the mouth and it's like it gives you it takes your mind away from what it can know so I think what causes anxiety is the, the repetitive thoughts and when you yes. ask those kind of abstract questions it kind of breaks that 
Right. There's nothing to grip onto. Right. Yes. So I feel much more relaxed now. Good. So let's let's get to the numbers. So okay. your you started you, your stress was about a five. So what what, what where are you now? Oh, it's probably uh, four. Okay, so down a notch. And what about your anxiety? You said it was about an eight when we started. Now it's much better. I mean, I still have a sensation, but I'm not identified with it as much. So that's probably like a five. A five. So you went from an eight to a five. I did. Okay, and pain, I think your pain was a two or yeah. something. So where's your pain now? Well, I, 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 I'm feeling pretty good, so it's, I don't have any... So your pain is a one or zero? Yeah, one or two. Okay, one or two. two, one or two. Yeah. Oh, so... so Oh, just a little change. Now, what about your mental clarity? Uh, I think you had said it was a seven or something yeah, like that. I Where? am more present now. Okay. I am because uh, my mind stopped going over certain, you know, ideas. So okay. the clarity of being present uh, was able to come through because my st- mind stopped uh, so, thinking. So good. Okay. So what so am I about Five now. About five, so down two notches. So for a person like yourself, that's a significant drop. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so so these these are these are even though from seven to five might not sound like a lot, but for some people that's a huge drop. No, it's much more relaxing. I also want to tell people at home, please let us know what your experience was in doing this exercise. Open focus. So Open focus. Yeah. And then then lastly, let let me or I should say finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell 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 me uh, what your sense of well-being is, because that that's that's actually what we all right. want, right? We want right. we want peace of mind, we want peace and a sense of well-being. You know, I have more of a sense. I mean, it's as if the anxiety is on top, and the well-being is always there. So I have a sense of well-being that I wasn't in touch with before. So my well-being's like a one or a two. Good. So where was the well-being when we started? I, I wasn't even in touch with the well-being. Oh my! The anxiety so had this is overridden. This is Tre- yes. fantastic. Yes. This is tremendous. Yes. Yes. So that'll be wonderful for people in the audience. That that, well, that 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 that's fantastic. Yeah, I wasn't aware of even well-being and this ex- simple exercise. Really simple. Yes. I mean, but you helped me. I mean, I feel better. Thank you so much. And that, and that is you. the bottom line. And the point is, this is a form of self-help, that th- this is what I'm saying, the difference between therapy and coaching. So now... This you, wasn't therapy. This wasn't therapy. This was coaching because now this is a type of exercise. I can make a, a MP3 or you can get a, a MP3 from Dr. Femi mm-hmm. and and you can listen to this and, and then it, you will have the same effect or similar effect and... Once you listen to it enough times, you'll be able to do it on your own. And that's the whole point. You're sitting in the airport, and you're looking at your phone, and you're getting stressed out, and you say, hey, listen, time out. I'm going into open focus. Here's the really good news. I got really good news for your audience. Okay, here's the good news. Okay, the good news is that once you become proficient in open focus, then you can do it with eyes open. And so you can be in a board meeting, you could be at the airport, you could be playing with your kids, you can play tennis. In fact, um, there, there are athletes that, that at a very high level, like in the Olympics, learn how to do open focus because what it does, it puts you in a flow state. And everyone knows that, that when you're in a flow state, you, you're, you, you, can, you have a better chance of uh, experiencing both peak performance and peak experience. And I've written about both of those. Bob, you are a great wealth of information and research, and you should have your own show. You should be the new Dr. Phil, <laughs> Dr. Bob. I mean, really, because I think, I think you have something people could use, a kind of peacefulness and uh, an internal sense of oneself. So thank you for being on the show, and thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your research. And I want to say we do have a show. <laughs> we have the Stress Free Now podcast show oh, you do. and series. And so and, it's a firm uh, and, yeah. and so but 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 you're right and thank you for a very wonderful compliment. And this has been fun and we have to do it again. We will. And 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 I think this is the type of thing where 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 um, 
hopefully you will get good feedback from your audience. Well, tell me the name of your show again that people can Stress find. Free Now. And Stress Free Now podcast. And where they find that? That they f- you can find that on iTunes. Okay, uh, you have a whole list of things that Yeah, on be. iTunes, uh, you can find it. We're we're on Blueberry. We're we're all over. We're on Podbean. Um, uh, and and now we're we're going up on YouTube. Right. And yes. we're going to go, we're, we're shooting this live from YouTube Studios. So yes. This is part of it. Uh, thanks again. And I know there's so much more we haven't even touched, like the whole idea of how to deal with addiction. And, yes. And the, the physiology of addiction and shifting that. Can you give us just a, before we go, just a little, I know it's like, it's a huge subject, but what do you do with people who have certain addictive patterns, behaviors, substances? Well, it, you know, again, this is a, a huge area just like grief recovery. So notice the similarity in the name, D- grief recovery, addiction recovery. So since the time is, is, is short, what I will say is the best advice I can give right now is prevention, mm. okay? Is, is what are the things that you can do to prevent becoming addicted? And so just a quick tidbit. The, the literature shows there was a, a huge uh, meta study done about people that have anxiety and addiction, so a dual diagnosis. And here's the really good news. What was discovered is that if the anxiety was uh, dissolved or gotten rid of, 75% of the participants never got addicted. So a technique like open focus or for some people it would be medication, if the anxiety is, is, is um, addressed, mm. then because what, what is the addiction about? It's self-medicating, trying to numb out the pain. Right, but there are addictive personalities, and that's a whole other that's subject. That's a whole other issue. That and deal- that, but that's only a small percentage of the population, mm-hmm. right. but more of it is, is, is all the advertising and then all of the normalization. It's like, for example, like marijuana is being legalized all over, right, recreationally. And so all if you talk to any uh, drug uh, um, recovery professional, they'll all say the same thing. Marijuana is a gateway drug. A so gate- a gateway Wait, to what? What's it a ga- gateway, gateway to? to other drugs like cocaine? That's to what crack. they used to say, but they don't believe that. Well, anymore. here's the sad news. The sad news. I was talking to some high school kids from a rural states, and that is one of the most mind blowing things. The drug crisis is in the it used to be called the inner city issue now it's in the rural areas the and here's cities. what the kids said from an affluent rural area they said oh we skipped the marijuana we went right to the cocaine <laughs> and i was and you know i what can i what can i say you know these are high school kids they thought it was funny and but you know that's the kind of thing that catches up with you if you're 15 years old and you're already doing cocaine right well, that's a whole other. We'll get into that too, and maybe you could work with uh, kids to uh, deal with, help them deal with situations so they don't have to become. Yeah, uh, and get into and, drugs. And, and and I just want to say this in, in closing: yeah. the issue of addiction is not just drugs; it's addictions to sex, to gambling, and to our smartphones. And this is a re- this is a real issue. So, ten yeah. percent um, of the admits in uh, Bellevue Hospital here in New York City are due to cell phone distraction. People falling to holes, walking wow. in front of the bus, getting hit by a taxi. Because they're on their cell phone. They're on. They're looking at. They're looking down at the screen. In fact, the um, the orthopedics are reporting. You know, teenagers coming in with problems with their neck, et cetera, because they're looking down. Wow. Yeah. So, Bob, let's do more because you are a wealth of information, really, and this is your life. I mean, this is not just something you do. It seems like something you live because you're dealing with your own stuff yeah. and working with yourself. We so. all live there. So for people to find you and maybe do a session, how would they find you? I'm easy to find. The stress, they, the, our website is uh, www.stressfreenow.info www.stressfreenow.info. That's our website. Our podca- podcast series is called Stress Free Now. 
can just type in stress free now into the search engine and our series will come up uh, at this point we have 141 episodes for you to enjoy which is a wide range of topics uh, I can be found very easily on Facebook if you type in my name Robert Wright Jr. comma PhD I'll come up and all of my posts are public so I'm very easy to find on Facebook and I'd be happy to uh, communicate with you Thank you. I've been talking to Dr. Bob Wright, and this is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you've liked the show, let me know. You can email me at newrealities at earthlink.net. You could check out my YouTube channel. You know, I just want to say to you, this has been a very grounding show. Usually I'm a little more out there, but this has brought me back back home here. Alan, can I give out my email address? Yes, okay. please. All right, so I'll give out my email address. Um, my personal email address is my name, robertwright.usa at gmail.com. So that's R-O-B-E-R-T-W-R-I-G-H-T dot USA at gmail.com. It occurred to me that there may be people out there that, are, that have an issue that, or a question they like, might like to ask me, and, I, and I'd be happy to do that on your behalf. Great. Well, I'm happy you were on the show, and we'll be in touch.